morning and welcome. Um, as president of the Direct Marketing Association, we have the pleasure of uh, having come in, rushing into the 90s. We uh, took on digital about five years ago. Up until that point, we were pre predominantly a direct mail uh, association, and we believe that the principles based in one-to-one -one marketing in direct mail applied very much to digital media, and that Google themselves and Facebook consider themselves in the direct marketing space, so we moved pretty rapidly into digital media. I ran my own ad agency for 20 years and sold it off to one of the big guys. And the ad agency was traditional strategy. Uh, we were in charge of brands like Canon, uh, Pioneer Electronics, Air Canada Vacations, and we managed our entire brand pre-digital. So I would say in the late 90s, or early 2000s, when really the digital revolution started. And what, I, what I've noticed as a professional in the business is, is that during that first 10 or 15 years as we used it digital, we used it the way we knew how to use it. In other words, prior to digital, there were basic principles of marketing that we all followed. We tried to do it customer-centric, but we never had a medium that talked back. We never had one that actually, you know, we, we, we tried to understand what was going on over there, but with mass media, it was a lot more difficult. In today's market, this one talks back, and it's very, very different. So we, we take a stand that the principles, the mindset for traditional advertising is very different than digital. And the mistake that we've made over the last 15 years is we've applied traditional mindset to digital, and it hasn't worked. So I'm going to declare digital broken. And what we want to talk about in the next 45 minutes is how we might go about starting to get into that next phase of digital where we start to use it well. Kevin's got some brilliant strategies. Uh, Kevin is a is the smartest digital strategist I've had the pleasure of working with. He's written some, I think, mind-bending work on the whole, uh, the, really the, the context of digital marketing and where you have to come from in order to do it well. And if you come from that traditional strategy, you're going to fail. You cannot apply traditional tactics and context to digital marketing. And for the most part, that's what we've done. As brands, we're trying to shove our brand down their throats using digital, and it's not working. Kevin will get into some detail as to how it's not working. But prior... Test. Good morning. So it was funny because Derek phoned me is that, is that okay? Yep. Derek phoned me a little while ago and said, hey, Kevin, I want you to come speak on this panel. And I know you've worked in the ad agency world and the brand world and the consulting world in Europe and North America, Canada, US. And I know you've taken all that stuff that you've done over 20 years and you've compiled it down into five seminar lectures, but I need you to deliver all that in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Not asking much, huh? No, 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 no problem. <laughs> so here I am thinking, I'm like, okay, I've got to somehow disrupt a group of people and in 10 minutes get them to stop and think and somehow get them to see that there's a massive problem going on, but yet you're also the ones who can fix it. So Michelle, I don't know where you are that just spoke last, thank you. You talk about storytelling. So let's tell a story. You see, when I was a kid, I loved sports. And above all though, I loved basketball. I loved basketball because basketball had Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan was the absolute icon of excellence. And so I wanted to be like Mike. In fact, Mike ran campaigns, just be like Mike. And so every year, to keep me hooked into wanting to be like Mike, what did they do? They got me to want to buy his shoes. And what did I believe? I believed categorically that no matter what, if I could divest and beg my parents to spend an obscene amount of money on a pair of basketball shoes, I could perhaps just be like Mike a bit more. And so year in and year out, I would pursue the want to buy basketball shoes. But newsflash, did the basketball shoes make me a better basketball player? No. 
Not at all, <laughs> right? And here we are at Digimarcon, and we're going to hear all kinds of presentations about all kinds of things and all kinds of new things. And are they going to necessarily make you a better marketer? No, right? They might give you some new tools or new assets, but are they really going to help you convert the strategic game that marketing and brand is begging you to fix? Frankly, a lot of brands right now acted like I did as a teenager. They chased the latest and greatest thing, hoping that they're going to do something new and innovative and great with it, but it's not working. I ran an agency. I owned an agency. I've worked in marketing for almost 20 years. Um, confessional booth. Probably, maybe some of you can relate to this. As a marketer, I've had many times where I've heard or I've even said, you know, marketing belongs at the C level, right? We, we need to be treated with respect. We're an investment, not a cost. You ever heard that? Anyone? Right? You ever thought that? But we don't get it. We don't get that respect. And frankly, it doesn't happen because we made a mess. Derek didn't speak about this in his introduction, but Derek is the, by far the guru on CASEL, the Canadian anti-spam legislation. Joan just spoke about, we need to audit media, right? Fundamentally, marketing has and is always, and it will be, it's about a relationship, right? Between a brand and another brand or a brand and a person. And our job as a marketer is to form that relationship based on trust. Now, I just said it's a mess. Why does Castle exist? Because we screwed it up. We screwed up email marketing. So we have laws now because that whole thing called trust. Yeah, hire me, I'm the marketer, because I'll help you build a trusting relationship. Castle, right? You can trust me to build a relationship between me and your consumer or your target audience. Media, it's a mess. And we made it a mess. And we stand there saying, hey, trust me. I'm the guy that can fix your brand problems. We have a problem on our hands. It's a big one. So the goal of marketing hasn't changed. The goal of basketball hasn't changed. In basketball, if you score more points than the other team, at the end of the game, you win. The goal of marketing is take a brand, form a relationship with an audience so that there's changed behavior. Buy this, sell this, do that, endorse this, whatever. Right? The fundamental goal remains the same. But just like basketball, let's stick on that metaphor for a second. Since Michael Jordan retired, the game has kind of changed. The strategies have changed, the coaching strategies. You now got seven foot centers that can shoot three pointers. Right? You didn't have that back then. Marketing has shifted, it's radically changed. And not to bore you with a, a history lesson, but for 30 seconds, just bear with me. 1905. The University of Pennsylvania launched a course called the Marketing of Products. That's really kind of where academia began to get involved with marketing. What happened then was you had different eras of prominence in marketing, right? There was radio, there was TV, there was print, newspaper, magazine, whatever. Then you had stuff like integrated marketing communications and, and guerrilla marketing, and all these things kind of had their spot on our podium of being the thing that you need to be great at. You know, Joe mentioned some dates in there, but in and around the 2000, the dot-com era, oh, we needed to do web. See the pattern, right? Something new comes out, I need to buy new Air Jordans, right? Web comes out, oh, I better be good at web. 2003, 2004, 2005, right? You've got Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. I'm still a crappy basketball player even if I've got new shoes, right? And as Derek quickly mentioned in his opening comment, the root problem there is that since 1905, as marketers who are supposed to build a relationship of trust, we have spoken at an audience. You listen to the radio, you watch the TV, you read print, right? And for the first years of digital, what did we do? We basically took the brochure and we shoved it on the internet, right? So you can now read the brochure on the internet. But as Derek said, it's no longer talking at, it's talking with. It's now a relationship game. So the essence of promotion has significantly decreased and the essence of engagement has significantly increased. Okay, so that's, that's the fundamental what's going on. Now, 
If you want proof on this, this is not just Kevin's Kool-Aid. Okay, so I've got some stats so I don't mess them up. Joan also mentioned some numbers. This is according to Forbes. U.S. retail spent $23.5 billion in digital 2016. They're forecasting by 2021, $120 billion in spend. Ad week. Four years ago, the average advertising agency, the percentage of revenue that equaled digital was 25.8%. Now, it's over 40%. Okay? And what are they doing? They're spending money in digital so that they can have a relationship based on trust with their target audiences to elicit change behavior. That's our job, right? But Forrester, nasty Forrester, they evaluated the top 50 brands globally, McDonald's, Toyota, Nike, Coke, and on and on. They did a year-over-year -year comparison, and they evaluated 11.5 million interactions. And they looked at three things. You need to understand these three things are enormously telling to the disaster that we're living in. The volume of digital, year over year, doubled. So that means how much noise did the brand or the brand's agency make in digital space? It doubled year over year. The follower count, right, which is the people on the, let's say, the target audience side, the follower count, which basically means I want to connect with you, I want to have a relationship with you, also doubled. The engagement score. This is the big one. This is the number three. So I'm making twice as much noise. I'm getting twice as many followers. Engagement scores. Twitter, minus 10%. Instagram, minus 50%. Google Plus, minus 35%. So you're making twice as much noise, and people are saying, I want to connect with you, but you're making so much of the wrong noise, they're saying, I'm not interested. The only one that went up was Facebook, and it's 5%. And they say that's because you pay, it's paid advertising. In English, what do those numbers mean? Two years ago, the aggregate average of engagement scores, 1%. The second year, half percent. If, as a husband, I listen to my wife, half of 1%, do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand? Not so happy marriage, right? Like, you get that, right? The, the whole point is, you know, are there any agency guys in the room? Any agency people? Couple? Okay, agency people. Accenture does a national study over 11 different countries, okay? They evaluated CEOs from major corporations, and only 6% of the people in these corporations see their agency as a solution to their digital problem. Right? And 50% of brands are looking to switch agencies this year. Okay? Obviously, the rest of you are brand-related marketing people. Forbes, 32%. Yeah, only. Only. 32% of brands believe that digital is helping achieve business results. 32%. Okay? That's not good. That's not good at all. More importantly, digital, when you ask CEOs, it's in their top three priorities. So digital is important, and we are not performing. And we're not performing because we're buying Air Jordans. Right? And we're expecting what we used to do to work. Our role as marketers, so far, we have a score of 1% last year or two years ago and half percent last year. That's our average engagement score. Our role is to develop a relationship of trust using this thing called digital so that target audiences and brands connect. That's our job, fundamentally. We've made a mess. Right? We need to stop thinking about, should I do programmatic? Should I buy Instagram or Facebook? Should I think about Twitter? Or how can I use automation better? Stop talking at an audience and understand that you need to develop a relationship with. Now, 
in closing, because I know we're tight on time, the thing that you can walk away with as you need to tell this to the people that you work with, an analogy. Digital is to marketing what gunpowder was to war. Stick with me. Hold on. Digital is to gun, right? Digital is to marketing what gunpowder was to war. Before gunpowder, wars happened. Army one on one side, army two on the other side. Spears, arrows, bows, whatever. Line them up and crash into each other. Right? They would just slam into each other, and the guys with the bigger army usually won. Gunpowder comes around, and you look at the early you know, Civil War, what did they do? They had guns and cannons, but they lined them up and lined them up, and they just crashed into each other. And then the military generals who were smart said, wait a minute, I don't need to do that anymore. I can use snipers and like, little tactics that are different. So war, the way wars were fought, changed because of gunpowder. The way digital marketing happens because of digital is different. You can't keep lining up, talking at an audience, and hoping that maybe now this time it's going to work. There's four things you need to know about. And if you're interested in this and you think I'm not completely insane, give me your business card and I can send you a white paper which explains all this in more than 10 minutes. Four things. Strategy. Number one, brands are looking to marketers to say, I need you to tell me how to do it. Strategically, how do I play this new game called marketing in digital? Two, customer profile segmentation. Right? When you hear someone say to you, my audience is women in their 40s. Oh boy. Right? You have, you have, you, but why do people click on content? We, we can now measure it, but why? So learning how to develop customer profiles based on engagement motive drivers in digital. Number two. Okay? It's all in the white paper. You can have it. Number three. So now that you know your customer and what motivates them, how do you deploy content against that to elicit engagement? Not talking at, talking with, developing a relationship. And of course, last but not least, number four, analytics. How do you measure, what do you measure, and how do you report without lying? <laughs> right? So that you actually can show your developing and changing behavior. Folks, I am out of time. But ultimately, categorically, most importantly, the game of marketing has changed because of digital, right? Stop buying fancy shoes. Strategically make the mental shift towards engagement because that's what brands need. With fancy shoes, you might look good, but you're still going to be sitting on the bench. Thanks for your time. <laughs>